Howdy. This video is on buffers. Buffers are, are used to help maintain a relatively constant pH. Buffers are important for biological systems because they help maintain a relatively constant pH. Protein secondary structure actually depends on pH as a solution, and so it's important to maintain a relatively constant pH. What you should be able to do after watching this video is be able to write down the reaction and determine the chemical constant for a buffer consuming an acid or a base. Be able to describe how to make a buffer solution for a specific pH and describe how buffers are composed of weak acid and conjugate base and relate buffers to the henderson hasselbalch equation. And so you should remember the henderson hasselbalch equation you can use to calculate the pH when you have a weak acid and its conjugate base. Now, an example of a buffer would be the bicarbonate uh, carbonic acid buffer solution. It's actually present in um, in blood to help control blood pH. It's a little bit more complex. Uh, biological systems are a little bit more complex, but this is, gives you an example. And so the carbonic acid will react with any excess hydroxide. The bicarbonate ion will react with any excess hydrogen ion. And so buffers consist of a weak acid and conjugate base. Whenever you have a weak acid and its conjugate base, you have a buffer. So for instance, if you have HF and F minus, there's a buffer. If you have dihydrogen phosphate and hydrogen phosphate, there's a buffer. If you have ammonium ion and ammonia, there's a buffer. And so the weak acid will react with any added hydroxide ion. The conjugate base will react with any added hydronium ion. So if we have the HF buffer, any added hydroxide gets reacted with HF, forming water plus F minus. Um, if any added hydronium ion reacts with a fluoride ion, forming HF and water. Now, if we look at the Eklund constant for that top reaction, though, she have hydroxide as a reactant, and so we think 1 over Kb, and so the Eklund constant for that reaction is 1 over Kb of F minus. F minus is, is a very weak base, and so Kb is very small, so 1 over Kb is very, very large, and so we can assume that any added hydroxide, almost all that is going to be consumed because the Eklund constant for that reaction is very large. If you look at the second reaction, we have the hydronium ion written as a reactant, and so we think 1 over Ka, that's 1 over Ka of HF. HF is a weak acid. It's a nasty acid, but it's a weak acid because only a small proportion of those molecules break apart. And so the Ka is very small. 1 over Ka is very large. And so pretty much all the added hydronium ions will be consumed by the fluoride ion. And so any added hydroxide gets consumed by the weak acid. Any added hydronium ion gets consumed by the conjugate base. Now we can actually look at an example how a buffer works. And so we'll add the same concentration and amount of acid to two solutions, one pure water, one containing a buffer. For the pure water, we'll see the pH actually goes from 6.29 to 1.8. The pH of a beaker of ordinary tap water is 6.29, slightly acidic because small amounts of carbon dioxide are dissolved in it. When we add a 0.1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid to the beaker, the water shows a large change in pH. Water is not a buffered solution. And now we can add exactly the same amount of acid to a buffer solution. In the beaker is a mixture of dissolved dihydrogen phosphate ion and its conjugate base, hydrogen phosphate ion. The solution has a pH of 6.92. We add 10 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution of hydrochloric acid which causes only a small decrease in pH to 6.72. The solution is said to be buffered by the conjugate pair. This phosphate buffer system is found in the kidneys and helps to regulate blood pH. And so to the pure water, we see the, the pH just drops down dramatically very, very quickly, you know, from a little bit less than seven down to one. For the buffer solution, we see a gradual decrease, and so not all the added hydrogen ion is being consumed, but most of it is being consumed. And so for the buffer system, maintains a relatively constant pH, not exactly constant, but relatively constant pH. Now, whenever you have a weak acid conjugate base, you do have a buffer, and there's actually three ways of forming a buffer solution. If we take a weak acid and add the conjugate base, there's no reaction, but we form a buffer. And so you have to be able to recognize that like the sodium acetate on the top there, 
is actually present in sodium ions and acetate ions. And so we have acetate, acetic acid, that's going to be our buffer solution. And so one way of forming a buffer is weak acid plus the salt of the conjugate base. Another way of forming a buffer is reacting some of the weak acid with a strong base. So again, here we have acetic acid plus hydroxide gives us acetate ion. And as long as we don't consume all the weak acid, we will end up with a buffer solution. And then the third way is if we take some of the weak base and react it with a strong acid. And so we take the acetate ion plus um, hydronium ion gives us acetic acid. And as long as we do not consume all of the acetate ion, we will end up with a buffer solution. And so it's three ways of forming a buffer solution. Weak acid plus the salt of the conjugate base, reacting some of the weak acid with a strong base, reacting some of the weak base with a strong acid. And so please remember when you see a, a salt, and it's aqueous, it's actually present in the ions. And so sodium acetate is present in sodium ions and acetate ions. The acetate ion is conjugate base for acetic acid. And so sodium acetate plus acetic acid gives us a buffer solution. Now, again, the second one is reacting some of the weak acid with a strong base. And so you got to remember sodium hydroxide is a strong base. It's actually present in sodium ions and, and hydroxide ions. And so we're just going to ignore the sodium ions. Please remember sodium hydroxide just means sodium ions and hydroxide ions. And so sodium is not involved in reaction. It will be ignored. And so if we have one mole of acetic acid, one mole of hydroxide. Now looking at this reaction, remember that hydroxide is a strong base. And so... You can imagine that compound reaction is going to be very large. It's actually one over KB for the acetic for acetate ion, and so that compound is very large. You can consider it goes to completion, and so we got one mole of acetic acid, one mole of hydroxide, and so those two get consumed, and so we will not end up with a buffer solution because we consumed all of our weak acid. Remember, at the end of the reaction, you have to have both weak acid and conjugate base to have a buffer solution. Now, if we had one mole of acetic acid, one mole of hydro and half a mole of hydroxide ion, well, then we're going to run out of the hydroxide ion first. That's our limiting reagent. And so um, X would be 0.5. And so 1 minus X gives us 0.5. So we have 0.5 acetic acid and 0.5 acetate ions. And so we would end up with a buffer solution. You don't need equal amounts of, of the weak acid conjugate base. You just need some of both to have a buffer solution. Now, if we had 0.5 acetic acid and one of the strong base, the hydroxide ion, notice that in this case we're going to run out of the acetic acid first, and so we would not form a buffer solution. And so three ways of forming a buffer solution, take the weak acid plus the conjugate base, assault the conjugate base, you react some of the weak acid with a strong base, and you react some of the conjugate base with a strong acid. And so in this case, say we initially we have 0.5 acetate ion, one mole of hydron ion, will it form a buffer? Well, just remember HCl is a strong acid, so it's actually present as hydron ions and chloride ions. Um, chloride ion is not acidic, and so we're just going to ignore it in this reaction. And so HCl, we're just going to pay attention to hydron ion because it's a strong acid. And so if we have 0.5 of acetate ion and one mole of hydron ion, that can constant for this reaction is one over Ka of acetic acid. Ka is very small, so one over Ka is very, very large. We can treat this reaction as going to completion. And so you notice that this acetate ion is our limiting reagent. We're going to run out of that first. And so we will not form a buffer because we've consumed our acetate ion. For a buffer, we need both the weak acid and the conjugate base. Now, if we started with one mole of the acetate ion and say 0.25 moles of the hydrogen ion, well, in this case, the hydrogen ion is going to be the limiting reagent. We'll run out of that first. And so we'll end up with 0.75 moles of the acetate ion, 0.25 moles of acetic acid. And so we have weak acid conjugate base, and so we would have a buffer solution. Again, you don't need equal amounts of the weak acid conjugate base. You just need some of both. And so an interesting type of question you might see is which of the following, when added to one mole of HF, will form a buffer solution? And so adding HF to HF is just more nastiness, but it's no buffer solution. Now, if you look at 
the sodium fluoride. Remember, sodium fluoride is actually sodium ions plus fluoride ions. And so that's at weak acid plus salt in the conjugate base. So C, D, and E all would give you a buffer. HF is an acid, HCl is an acid, so you're not going to get a reaction. You're not going to form a buffer for F and G. Um, sodium hydroxide is a base, so HF plus sodium hydroxide, you'll form F minus plus some water. Now, as long as you don't consume all the HF, you'll form a buffer. And so 0.5 moles of sodium hydroxide does give you a buffer, and one mole of sodium hydroxide does not. But again, remember that you can do a salt plus the acid, and that gives you a buffer. There's no reaction, but this gives you a buffer. And as long and you can do the weak acid plus hydroxide as long as you don't consume all the weak acid. And so 1.5 moles of sodium hydroxide, you'd end up with half a mole of HF and half a mole of F minus, so that would work. But if you did one mole of HF and one mole of hydroxide, you'd end up consuming all of your weak acid, and so that would not give you a buffer solution. We can look at another similar problem here. We have one mole of HCl, which the following will form a buffer solution. And so you have to think about what reactions are going to happen. So HCl plus HF, there are two acids, no reaction there, so no buffer. HCl plus sodium fluoride, um, no real, um, HCl will, will react with the fluoride ion forming HF. Um, and so as long as you don't consume all of your F minus, you will get a buffer there, so I think E would actually work there. HCl plus HCl just gives you more HCl. HCl plus sodium hydroxide, no way of forming a buffer. And so for this one, it's just HCl plus the sodium fluoride. And so to get a buffer, you have to have some of both weak acid and conjugate base. Now here we have one mole of sodium fluoride, which of the following when added will form a buffer. And so sodium fluoride, you're gonna have sodium ions, fluoride ions, fluoride ions, the conjugate base of HF. And so A and B should work. Now sodium fluoride plus sodium fluoride, no buffer. Sodium fluoride plus HCl, as long as you don't consume all of your sodium fluoride, and so half a mole of HCl would work. Sodium fluoride and sodium hydroxide, you're not really going to get a reaction. The fluoride ion is a base and the hydroxide is a base. And so for this one, it's just half a mole of HF, one mole of HF, um, half a mole of HCl. And so three ways of forming a buffer, either adding a salt of the conjugate base plus the weak acid, reacting some of the weak acid with a strong base, or reacting some of the conjugate base with a strong acid. And so, if you want a buffer solution with pH of 4.3, which of the following would be the best choice for the pH? And so you see the equation there, that's the henderson hasselbach equation. And so the pH is dominated by the pKa. And so if you want a pH with 4.3, a buffer with a pH of 4.3, you're gonna to wanna to choose an acid with a pKa close to that number. And so on this table, the acetic acid acetate ion is the closest one with a pKa of 4.74. And so that was what we would choose for our buffer system. Now, if we wanted actually to make this buffer, what we'd do is we could use the henderson hasselbach equation. We could solve for the ratio. And so as long as the ratio of the concentrations of acetate ion to acetic acid was 0.36, then our pH should be 4.3. Remember, for the henderson hasselbach equation, it's kind of interesting. It shows you that the pH is dominated by pKa, and it's affected by the ratio of the base to the acid, not the absolute amount of base and acid, just the ratio. The absolute amount of base and acid dictate the buffer capacity, how much hydroxide ion, how much hydrogen ion it can consume, does not dictate the pH, it's the ratio that actually dictates the pH. And so please remember, buffers are composed of weak acid conjugate base. Um, the weak acid of a buffer reacts with any added hydroxide. The conjugate base of the buffer reacts with any hydrogen ions. These reactions have very large outcome constants, so you can almost consider them to go to completion. Buffers maintain a relatively constant pH, which is important, especially for biological systems. When selecting a buffer, find one with a pKa close to the pH that you want to maintain. And again, when you have a weak acid conjugate base, we can always use the henderson hasselbach equation. henderson hasselbach equation shows us that, you know, if we want to buffer with a certain pH, we try to find an acid with a pKa close to that pKa, pH. I hope that helps.